Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. We're going to catch up on all things Ixalan before the entire set reveal and then, oh, and then there's going to be more content than you can shake a stick at. Deck text, lore catch-up videos, more preview coverage. We're going to make up for lost time, people. So strap in and get ready for the ride of your life. Also, in case you missed it, we revealed our exclusive preview card earlier, so click the link on the screen to check it out. It's pretty swank. Anywho, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, remember to hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Dousing Dagger is 2 mana for an artifact equipment with an equip cost of 2. Equip creature gets plus 2 plus 1. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates 2 zero 2 plant tokens with Defender. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may transform the Dousing Dagger into the Lost Veil. A land card that you can tap to add 3 mana of any one color to your mana pool? Whoa, what? Hello, new Lotus Veil. Not even trying to hide that by calling it the Lost Veil. This is Lotus Veil, but you don't have to sacrifice lands. You just have to get by some zero two. 2 plant tokens. I'm sorry, but just stick this equipment onto a flyer or something with any kind of evasion and boom, you get a Lotus Veil. Ixalan, printing reserveless cards since, I guess, this year, but you get what I mean, okay? Lost Veil is crazy strong. That stupid dagger is easy to flip. I don't even know anymore. Shadowed Caraval is 2 mana for a 2-2 two -two artifact vehicle with a crew cost of 2. Whenever a creature you control explores, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Caraval. I mean, this is a rare? I suppose I understand that exploring is strong and you get free plus 1 plus 1 counters when you do it, but explore doesn't grow on trees. And even if it did, why is this a rare? Nothing about this screams rare to me. It doesn't have any keywords, no mechanics, no evasion, no protection, it'll just die. This feels like an uncommon to me, honestly. Wish I could say more, but I really don't see its playability anywhere which is a huge bummer. Axis of Mortality is 4 of anything and 2 white for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may have 2 target players exchange life totals. Sure, wizards. I didn't think we were going to see a card this blatant after Soul Conduit all the way back in New Phyrexia, but here we are. And you get to change life totals at the beginning of each of your upkeeps? What chaos! Obviously, this is meant for Commander. You're going to want to run this in a deck where you intentionally destroy your life total before swapping. So something like Aloro or Zur or Marchesa. Okay, first you get one of those Commanders, then you drop a bunch of life through a strong spell like Necropotence or Toxic Deluge, Phyrexian Reclamation, Greed. There are plenty of options in that format. After you destroy yourself, as long as you don't actually die, you then swap your life total with a healthy one. Best part? You don't actually even have to target yourself. Use the Axis to control the board and make people afraid to make headway on the battlefield. Of course, this will ultimately end with them targeting you or your Axis. But if you're playing that card, you know what's coming. You have to. Come on, you're that person after all. Spell Swindle is 3 of anything and 2 blue for an instant. Counter target spell, create X treasure tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Okay, is it just me or is Ixalan just reprinting old, really strong cards but with Ixalan twist? Because this is a treasure based mana drain. It just is. It counters a spell, then gives you mana equal to the converted mana cost of what you just wrecked. Sure, it's a lot more expensive, but the inspiration is clearly the same. Mana Drain, Spell Swindle. It's a pirate version of the card, it just is. And I find that adorable, and obviously it's going to find a place in our booty deck. Man, I cannot wait to build that booty deck. I am so pumped. Sword Point Diplomacy is 3 mana for a sorcery. Reveal the top 3 cards of your library. For each of those cards, put that card into your hand unless any opponent pays 3 life, then exile the rest. I love the idea here. The concept is great. The problem is you're giving your opponent so much flexibility. Even if it's just a single opponent, letting them go through each individual card is brutal. They get to decide what's better, 3 life or a dangerous threat. Now yeah, 3 life isn't nothing. But compared to some cards in your deck, I'm sure losing 3 life is a bargain. You could end up drawing 3 cards with this or ping your opponent for 3 and get 2 lands. I simply don't enjoy how much say your opponent gets, that's all. Captivating Crew is 4 mana for a 4-3 human pirate. You can pay 4 mana and gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery? This card is absurd in Commander. It's just totally ridiculous. Not only are active trees and effects powerful in general, but this one's on a creature and you don't even have to tap it to use it? Come on! Sure, it's only sorcery speed, but when you can cast it multiple times in a turn, please, that's so good. What about running this stupid thing in a Bryon Stout Arm deck? or Marchesa, or anything that obviously benefits from you stealing crap. Captivating Crew is going to be one of the first cards I get from the set for Commander. The hilarity that is about to ensue, no one's prepared. I'm not even prepared, and I'm the one who's going to play it. Hilarity. 
Lightning Rig Crew is three mana for a zero five Goblin Pirate that you can tap to deal one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast a pirate spell, untap the crew. Oh hey, so we have a Thermo Alchemist that really likes other pirates. I don't think this is nearly as efficient as the Thermo Alchemist, but it has a bigger butt, which is nice, and it's more expensive. Again, another card where I like the concept, playability is a bit eh for me. Of course, in Commander, you obviously have to play this because it deals damage to each opponent and you will be the most annoying pirate player ever, obviously. Yeah, you know what? Just do that. Death Gorge Scavengers, 3 mana for a 3-2 Dinosaur. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may exile target card from a graveyard. If a creature card is exiled this way, you gain 2 life. If a non-creature card is exiled this way, the Scavenger gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. As already pointed out, this is like the dinosaur version of Scavenging Ooze. What's nice is you get the trigger as soon as it enters the battlefield, unlike the Ooze. It is 1 additional mana, but you get an extra power out of it, a relevant creature type, and a trigger instead of an activated ability. Not having to spend additional mana is nice, and clearly this card is anti-graveyard. Not even sure how graveyard decks are supposed to exist in standard at all at this point, but I digress. The only downside to this thing is that the plus one plus one boost is only until end of turn. Oh well, I mean it's a decent sideboard dino anyways. Field of Ruin is a non-basic land card that you can tap to add one colorless to your mana pool. You can also pay to tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. Each player searches their library for a basic land card, puts it onto the battlefield, then shuffles their library. And this tops the list of cards I didn't think I'd ever see in this set. Land Destruction? We all know how much Wizards hates land destruction, and this land is actually pretty friggin' decent at it. The cost isn't too high, it can hit any non-basic land. And while you do give your opponent a new land, you get one as well so you aren't behind. Field of Ruin is a great card for Commander and absolutely solid for Standard against decks that care about their non-basics. Maybe Deserts or Duels and Three Color decks, stuff like that. Wow, I did not expect a card like this to get printed. I am super impressed. Field of Ruin is actually a good land destruction spell. Think on that for a second. Vraska Relic Seeker is four of anything, one black and one green for a six loyalty legendary planeswalker. You can plus one and create a two two black pirate token with menace. You can also minus three and destroy target artifact, creature, or enchantment. Create a colorless treasure token. You can also minus ten and target player's life total becomes one. I've been thinking a lot about Vraska and her playability and I keep coming back to the same few points. First, she has everything you want in a card. She has protection in the form of a 2-2 pirate. She has immediate removal in the form of her minus three. And she has an over-the-top ultimate that, for all intents and purposes, closes out the game. She has everything. The only problem is her casting cost. Six mana is a lot. It really is, and I don't care what strategy you're playing, six mana is a hefty price. So we have to decide, is this worth sitting on until you have six mana? And my gut says yes, it does. And I'm not just being stupidly optimistic. Think about it. She either creates a 2-2 with evasion, or has removal for most anything twice, and it only takes two 2-2 pirate activations to get her to her ultimate. I mean, yeah, she's expensive, but she comes with high loyalty. She can get up to eight the turn she comes down in standard. If you're thinking commander, it gets even more hilarious. Your opponent will be at one faster than you've ever seen, and all of her abilities are just so relevant. They're all good and will always be good. There won't be a single time where you won't want at least one of these. Find me a point in the game where you wouldn't want to nuke your opponent's life total, or create a 2-2 with evasion, or kill something and ramp yourself. Vraska asks all the questions and has all the answers worth the cost, believe it or not, well worth the cost. Sky Terror is one red and one white for a 2-2 dinosaur with flying and menace. You know, if we didn't need the two drop slot in the dinosaur deck for the crazy amount of ramp that we obviously need it for, this would definitely be standard playable. It comes with two forms of evasion and is a 2-2 for two hot dog. This is a good card. Again, I'd love to play this in the dinosaur tribal deck and maybe it could work, but we really need the early game for ramp. The dinosaur deck is not aggressive, way more mid-range than aggro. Sky Terror? Great card though, that drops on turn 2 and limited, not sure how they stop it without hard removal, so strong. And with that, we round out our individual preview coverage for Ixalan, but the full set is being revealed soon, so look out for legit everything you could ever want to know about Ixalan over the weekend and the coming week. We're going to prepare you like crazy for the set's release, and specifically the pre-release. Super pumped about it. With all that said, how do you feel about what we've seen so far from the set? Is this the kind of limited environment that you're excited about? What about the flavor or standard playability? I need to know what you're thinking, so please, please, please leave your thoughts below and we'll talk about it. Gotta know where you're at. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. 
This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Ixalan pre-release is just around the corner, which means that Ixalan release is just around that next corner. If you want in on the new set of great prices, I got you back right now, along with TCG Player, of course. You can pre-order boxes right this second for $90 each, just $90. Super fair price, so if you don't have a local game store or yours is charging way too much, just click the link on the screen. Helps the channel we all win. Enjoy.